they study people with high blood pressure. Mm. And there's a study that says um, if they listen to Baroque music, uh, they can lower their blood pressure just by listening to calmer, you know, music from that era. Um, it'll just monitor your breathing for you. You don't have to think so hard. If you just tune your body as a musical instrument, you're not necessarily performing, you're just breathing. So the breath is just like gassing up, you know, giving you juice for your vibration to happen. For any of you who are suffering from COVID long-term um, challenges, not only is it good for your lungs, you need the oxygen to your brain. At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're welcoming a new facilitator with us, Jen Chang. And she is, as you can see from her background and the musical instruments are there, she is a musician, but also a breath and wellness uh, coach um, and a creator of music. And today, we're really going to be talking about uh, tuning your body with breath uh, to allow you to be in the eye of the storm, what that all means, uh, the power of breath to use it to de-stress you among all of these other benefits. And so I'm excited, you know, it's like, yeah, musical instrument of breath and all of that combined. So welcome today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to share more with the Liberate audience and uh all of you breathe, and I thought I knew how to breathe until I injured myself in my early 20s, uh, making too many Excel spreadsheets while doing research at an institute. And I found a Tai Chi master at the top of Knob Hill in San Francisco. By the time I hiked uphill both ways uh, <laughs> to and from Tai Chi class, I was exhausted and could barely make it to work. But I needed to go to Tai Chi class because I had given myself a case of what you call repetitive stress injury. So here I am, young 20-something, not getting enough sleep, living a city life in San Francisco. And as a pianist, it was terrifying that I lost use of my right hand. It would burn. It would pain. It was terrible. And oh, wow. So you were having physical effects from the stress that you were undergoing and you couldn't even use your right hand. And it was not just stress from, it wasn't really mental stress from work, but it was the stress of physically tapping on the mouse repeatedly oh. to make Excel spreadsheets. So any of you who are at the computer clicking away at the mouse, like that repetitive motion, if you're not breathing, will cause stress. If it's bad ergonomics where I'm like hiking up my shoulder right now, then that's going to be stress, right? So the physical stress of using a computer just that. I had an amazing boss. She was an amazing manager. So it wasn't stress from my management or the work environment, but it was me. I am a singer. I knew how to breathe, but somehow at the computer, I froze. I was concentrating so hard and it's not your fault. The computer screen actually has these light flashes yeah. that are so imperceptible unless you really notice them like I do. And that causes you to stare. And when you're concentrating and you're staring, you forget to breathe. Yeah. So all these EMFs and all the screens that we deal with cause you to hold your breath. And well, then, and not to mention, like you were saying, the er ergonomics and like the different ways that oftentimes we're sitting incorrectly, we're slouched over, the, the desk isn't at the right height for the chair. But like, I love this because when I first, you know, read what we're top topic was talking about i just assumed stress stress you know like emotional stress but like the physical stress it's i don't think like we've ever had like a topic about how sometimes you physically can put your body into stress that causes these um symptoms to occur and and negative consequences on on your physical mental and emotional state too it's almost like the opposite effect i mean the reversal well, I think everything is cyclical. So, you know, the concentration is a mental stress, right? Yes. And then there's the physical environment that is causing us to be stressed. So 
it's all mind, body, spirit, right? Yeah. And some of us are more stressed around the full moon and other times others of us love the full moon because it's a letting go. Um, and, it, and it could be stress around your birthday or the season or Mercury retrograde, whatever is getting at you. Yeah. Um, all of that will cause you to hold your breath because you're concentrating or you're uh, in your head too much and you're not connected to the 3D body. So as a singer, we all have to feel our feet mm -hmm. and to control your breath. You actually are breathing from more than your lungs. You need to breathe from your entire torso. And a lot of singers I know, uh, I've helped a friend recently, I could see he held tension in his mouth and neck. And just from the dry air of the heater being on in the winter, he was clearing his throat a lot. So I'm glad you have your cup of tea there. But for those of us who clear our throat a lot, we need to have a cup of water or tea with us at all times so that if your throat is dry, you swallow. Yeah. So you can make saliva and swallow. And then, oh, well, then breathing isn't so hard anymore. You actually do need to speak and breathe through your head, your heart, uh, your heart needs to speak all the way through your throat, all the way to your, your head and above to your crown. And you're downloading information from up there, your higher self. And so this flow up and down needs to happen. So this is what I mean in terms of having a 3D body. You know, mm. you first have to have your 3D body before you can get to the outer the ether. space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I so. love that. So, so you're hiking up this mountain and hiking down and you're going to the tai chi class on the top right um and then it's a hill thanks for giving me credit that it was a mountain <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah yeah uh, but so you know up and down up down and up and then you know when was it through this process that you were realizing wow i'm like not breathing i'm i'm super winded i need to change something like when was that like type of epiphany that happened well, here I was, uh, the youngest of all the people who were studying with this Tai Chi master, and I was the most unable to breathe, even though I'm a singer. Mm. So I realized that, yes, when I'm in choir practice, when I'm singing, I'm in good practice. But how do I integrate that into my daily life? Yeah. And so that's something I had to learn and this is you know 20 some years of observation and and umpteen years of teaching at a physical therapy clinic and working with people from all kinds of you know throat or throat chakra tra trauma or expression trauma whatever it is uh, we all all of us humans <laughs> have to catch our breath whether it's a cardio challenge mm. or just staring at the computer screen too long so um it was this basic Tai Chi exercise that the uh, teacher gave us. So here's a teaser for the workshop. Okay. Shameless plug. Uh, it's, yeah, call, you know, hey. <laughs> I call it music breath because sometimes we take things too seriously, right? That if you just tune your body as a musical instrument, you're not necessarily performing. You're just breathing like a balloon or a bubble or some kind of airy spacious thing so that you get out of all your clunky creaky bones and, yeah. <laughs> and tight neck problems so the simple tai chi exercise uh the master gave us was you're going to breathe in two beats and out two beats and then you progress to threes and fours and i thought ah i'm a singer i could do this Oh, boy, I couldn't get past threes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So it goes, it sounds a little something like this, if you don't mind my little yeah. uh, allergy noses. Uh, I, you know, I don't have a perfect body. So here I am, uh, imperfect and all. So you sniff. And you keep on going until when do you know that you go up to three or you walk around the park, you know, you walk up and down stairs, you do your hike with this inhale two and exhale two. So it comes out to four beats, which is a nice, yeah. we, our bodies like fours. We like, you know, songs and fours. Yeah. And when, when, do, when do you realize that you it's okay to go up? Well, when that's easy, like, so oh, do when it. it's easy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if, if you do it for a minute you're like, okay, let's challenge myself. Can I go up to three? 
So it's. That's hard for me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, <Yeah>. too. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I'm getting winded. <laughs> I guess that's when you know that it's uh, a little difficult, right? <laughs> right. And then, you know, you can smooth it out, right? So you can sniff, 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 and then exhale long. One, two, three. Got you. There you go. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I couldn't get to fours in my early 20s because I was such a wreck from being sleep deprived. So knowing that sleep, nutrition, all the good things you take care of your health affects how you breathe is important, right? Everything from if the air is dry, turn on the humidifier. If it's too cold, sometimes people gasp. I gasp when it's yeah. cold. Um, so just really hydrating all the things that you would take care of your voice as if you were a singer or actor you ought to do that for your wellness as a regular old human being, right? Yeah, because what are some of the benefits of being able to breathe properly? I mean... Oh, so the British Health Ministry, uh, the Europeans are somehow a little bit more on top of wellness than we American uh, institutions tend to be. They study people with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And there's a study that says um, if they listen to Baroque music, uh, they can lower their blood pressure just by listening to calmer, you know, music from that era. I tell my piano students, Baroque music doesn't go very fast because uh, back then when they were dancing the minuets and the gavots, they were wearing heavy wigs and heavy clothes. So they couldn't move very fast if you're, you know, carrying a heavy weight on the top of your head with those wigs. Yeah. Uh, that, that just makes everyone giggle like, oh, yeah, they, they had all this heavy wig stuff going on. So, <laughs> so you know, ideally, you're about 80 beats per minute when you're walking. You know, that's a good kind of musical tempo, because when you get to 100 and 120, that's when people are jogging and running on the treadmill. So uh, trying to breathe in a way that you can withstand the stress of walking up a hill or stairs with some mental control is what I advocate for. I, if you can listen to music that doesn't have a heavy drum beat, mm -hmm. but it's like a string quartet or, or something chill like guitar that's acoustic, um, it'll just monitor your breathing for you. You don't have to think so hard. Oh, I love that. And especially like nowadays, you know, in the COVID era, right, with so many people having shortness of breath, having different types of, you know, the virus literally attacks the lungs, right? You know, so how much more important it is. I mean, it's always been important, right, for people to be able to breathe, to regulate their body for all of these other benefits that you're just like sharing with us. But it's also like how if they can regulate that, if they do have any kind of, you know, unfortunately catch this or, or put themselves in a better uh, space of having stronger, uh, more vital air capacity and ability to breathe and, you know, lower uh, heart rates and stuff like that, how much more beneficial that is in this time and air and day, right? Yeah. And thanks for bringing that up. You hit upon something that is not discussed often enough, that the long-term effects of bronchitis, laryngitis, COVID, anything that challenges your breathing, you gotta put the effort to recover it because you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. And, and so whether for wellness or for illness recovery, especially for illness recovery, I was trying to get one of my private fitness clients to get on board as she's busy, so that's why I made a recording of the workshop. So mm -hmm. if you're able to join the workshop live, then you can ask questions that are personal. But if you can't, sign up anyway so you can get the recording to practice, right? Yeah. Even if you just practice five minutes in the shower, you know, five minutes when you're walking the dog, all of that adds up. It's your daily practice. Everybody who does yoga knows and when you don't do your stretches and you don't do your your core practice or whatever it is that it is your regular practice if you don't practice it it's not going to be there so yeah. yes please for any of you who are suffering from covid long term 
um, challenges, not only is it good for your lungs, you need the oxygen to your brain. So when you're breathing, you're not just oxygenating your lungs, you're, you're helping your heart, your, your, your brain, all the things that might have been affected by COVID or any other illness. And, and also the power of breath to elicit the connection into higher spiritual connections too, right? You know, when you're, when you're doing a breathing practice, I don't know, I'm sure you've had that experience where it kind of opens up that channel for connectivity as well. Absolutely. We go through a body scan to kind of really tune in, you know, are you feeling your feet? Are you feeling all the way through your pelvis, through your gut? You know, some of us have um, apparently about 70% of female bodied people have gut issues and other people are not diagnosed. So IBS, any kind of IBS, or you ate something bad the other day, you're recovering from that, you get disconnected from your stomach. Well, if you're disconnected from your stomach, then you've lost connection to your pelvis and feet, right? So you got to tune up your whole chakra system from the feet all the way through the pelvis, all the way through the lungs, all the way up to here. So as um, my first choir conductor taught us in uh, college is that when you're speaking, when you're singing, you're not just doing it from your mouth and your throat, but you're trying to send the noise, the sound up through the top of your whole head that you want mm. your, your, your face, your mask, your cheekbones, your eyebrows to vibrate. So yeah. if you think about it mystically, we are all vibration. So, so the breath is just like gassing up, you know, giving you juice for your vibration to happen. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one, you know, the one, just press it little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. I love that. And and that kind of brings me into the next segue of like, you know, you, you speak of uh, like using your breath to kind of like almost like tune your body, right? So what do you mean exactly by that? But it kind of, you know, when you were starting to talk, I was like, oh, that's it's kind of like, you know, I think what, you, you know, so. Yeah, so um I, I'm going to give away some of the exercises here in order to really illustrate that, you know, because it's like the concept is all in your head, but you got to hear it, feel it, do it, you know, give it a try. Um, so when when you're trying to tune your body, you do need to feel your feet. So a lot of us are ungrounded, but then some of us are disconnected from the middle. And then some of us are, you know, disconnected or find it harder to reach those high notes. I know that every time I have my allergies or I have a, you know, you know, snotty nose, sinus stuff, I need to like really try to work on getting that higher energy up here. So, um, yeah, so tuning your body is everything from sound therapy. You know, okay. all of you who love the sound bowls, I love them too, those crystal sound bowls, the lower notes are for your lower chakras, right? Mm -hmm. And the higher notes are for your higher uh, points of your body. So uh, in sound therapy, they say, if you sing a song like Doa Deer and it hits all the notes, you've tuned your spine. Bingo, <laughs> you know? Wow. So my advocacy is to sing in the shower. Don't care if you're out of tune, don't care if you have roommates or people who are gonna laugh at you. Who cares? You're tuning your spine by trying to sing a song. The typical pop songs are just kind of in the middle area and they're okay. in your speaking voice and your throat so, um, kind of throaty. Uh, just, so don't, don't try to sing like Bailey Eilish. She's got a special voice and people <laughs> to injure themselves trying to sing like their favorite pop star. She's brilliant. But um, what you want to do is just be childlike. Mm -hmm. and be goofy so if you think about it babies when they're first learning to speak go ba 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 ma 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 right Give yeah it a see like doesn't that you know figure ba, 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 ba. yeah yeah ma, 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 ma. so when you ma, 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 when you ma, 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 it's in here in in your mouth so why don't we go lower and and find the low Right? It's so hard because everybody thinks the lip trill of the buzzing of the lips, like a bee, comes from your lips, but not. It comes ah. from your pelvis. 
Interesting. So you put your hands on your stomach below your belly button. Everybody's good at their belly button, but everybody's kind of sagging and not connected to the low gut. I, and that low gut area right above the panties, the, the underwear line. So if you, uh, yes, I'm gonna give my belly a push where I'm gonna. So that's a party trick to entertain um, kids because you could blow bubbles in a pool or a bathtub and actually sing Mary Had a Little Lamb and that always makes everyone crack up or row, row, row your boat. Um, <laughs> um, I'm a little warmed up today. Sometimes I can't get past Mary Had a Little Lamb. Okay. I. I, I can get longer when I'm warmed up and I can get more breath. So notice I did two phrases in that yeah. silly buzz. But yeah, I mean, if you don't mind, Christina, give it a try. Like whatever silly child song that you know. <laughs> Me. Yeah, feet grounded. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get there. Like, uh, I, I guess I need to breathe better today. <laughs> Don't worry about blowing like Louis Armstrong. You're not trying to blow through a trumpet. Yeah. You can just try to get it from your gut. So you're kind of pushing your air in and up through your spine as if you're squeezing a water balloon out of you. Yeah. See, you, you started to get that. Right, and a lot of times we collapse our lungs when we do yeah. that, or collapse our chest. So I would say put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. Make sure that the hand on your chest is not collapsing, that it stays up, and that the hand on the belly gives a, oof, a, good, a good push in your gut to wake up those sleepy abs. Yeah, see? And so if the lip trill is hard, you can also do the Spanish R which uh -huh. is the tongue flap. So a lot of people start like tensing their tongues and nah, nah, nah. don't do that. Let your tongue be like a floppy dog tongue and it goes. Yeah. So it's, it's so <laughs> great. But I mean, like, the, but you know, when you're doing this and you're seeing these things and you're bringing back like childhood, it's so interesting how quickly we forget what is our, in our natural rhythm, right? You know, that uh, that is when a baby starts learning how to talk. That's what they do. You know, sound is a vibration that is everywhere and it has it's a frequency, right? You know, in that, of course, if we're out of alignment with those frequencies, but how often do we even pay attention to our body and how we breathe? Not often enough. So I challenge everybody check in with your breathing when you're, you know, doing chores, like folding laundry, washing dishes, you know, uh, feeding the dog, even how you bend over to feed the dog or, um, you know, walk, walk, take a walk outside. All the dumb errands we humans have to do is an opportunity to just tune into your body, just like being with yourself instead of being fragmented, right? We, we talk about when uh, being present, you uh -huh. know, really being present, is about being in your body and not being fragmented about your grocery list or your to-do list over all over the place, right? Yeah. So um, I know I cut off the thing, but maybe we can uh, guide like just a, a little brief of that, that belly to anybody that the belly breath or that below the belly breath to anybody that's uh, listening right now so they can give it a try, you know? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to fess up when my choir director gave me that brrr, uh, exercise, like, you know, hundreds of us in choir in college, I couldn't do it. It mm. took me six months to learn it. So wow. um, I figured out the tricks in the past 20 years on how to do it easier. So it won't take you six months, maybe it'll take you six days. Uh, so <laughs> one trick is to lay on your back on the floor with your knees bent. Okay. That always helps because now you're not fighting gravity. Your rib cage isn't collapsing and, and you know, you know, fighting gravity there. So yeah, laying on your back really helps. Um, if you have one of those uh, half rollers or full foam rollers where it relaxes okay. your spine, then you're instantly able to feel your whole spine. So you're less disconnected. You're more easily mm -hmm. relaxed and more connected by 
laying on a foam roller or even roll up um, two or three bath towels lengthwise. Mm -hmm. And that just gives your spine a little rest because a lot of us have shoulder tension. We have bad posture. We have neck and head headaches, whatever that is. So, um, so would the foam roller be going the length of your spine or across your shoulders? Lengthwise. Okay. So you want to allow your chest to open up. Yeah. Right? So, um, a lot of us are hunched forward. You yeah, know. I am. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you're watching this on, on the YouTube channel, you know, like you could see that I'm, I got to pull my elbows back because, you know, if you're at the computer where it yeah. works forward. So, so yeah, just being able to like feel that opposition of mm -hmm. up and down, um, you know, here's just a dumb rag, you know, you, if you're not supported, lift it up or down, then you kind of collapse, right? So mm -hmm. you want to have that energy flow up and down to give that um, tallness. And, and then um, you can give things a try by, you know, if you stop by your smoothie store, your coffee store, they usually have a straw. Mm -hmm. um, this is an eco-friendly bamboo straw that you can find. And um, you can just practice blowing bubbles in a cup of water. Oh, that's cool. Right? Like all the silly, goofy things you might have done as a three-year-old, that's what your body wants. I mean, the yoga masters, Tai Chi, Kung Fu masters, they all studied animals and babies. And that's your natural, elegant self, right? That you don't need to effort so hard. Yeah. <laughs> That he just did things and he tried things and you allowed that expression to be so natural. And then, so the three to four year old self needs to, and you need to embrace it at your 30, 40 or so year old self. <laughs> right. That the wisdom is how can you find that childlike mind and not go, oh, I can't do this. Right. Because that just tenses your body and creates more tension and stress that you're trying to let go of. So um, the the two things, you know, that you could totally do, uh, those of you who've done kundalini yoga, you probably know lion's breath. Mm -hmm. And um, I call it the happy dog tongue, you know, like when the dog is goofy and they're just ah, <laughs> tongue. And a lot of times when I ask people to stretch their tongue out, it's really tense and pointy and short. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I say you want that fat, wide dog tongue and a very long dog tongue. Yeah, so you're not pointing forward, but you're trying to uh, stretch that tongue all the way down uh, to the uh, bottom of your chin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Without dropping your head so that your neck isn't stressed. Uh, uh, just being like really silly. And so sometimes your breath is tied up because your tongue has so much tension. So yeah. if, if your hands are clean and you've washed them or you want to take a thin kitchen towel, you can even kind of pull your tongue, stretch your tongue out. And that would help clear some of that neck tension from inside your neck because that tongue goes deep, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, if you can't do things, um, Try to let go of the can't. I say, you can say any four letter word. I don't mind you struggling through learning, but the can't word is the one I don't want to hear, right? Yeah. So if something's hard, it's difficult, it sucks, it's okay. Like maybe there's a something else holding you back. So yeah. check your body. Is it that your spine needs to lay down to learn? You know, because when you're laying down, the spine doesn't have to work so hard. Uh, is it stuck in your tongue? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so um, here's the lip trill challenge now that we've stretched our tongue. Um, for those of you who have had like surgery in your mouth or, or on your face, maybe the lip trill isn't your best um, exercise. So you can alternate and do the tongue trill instead. So you can go. <laughs> for me, that causes me more tension. So I'm going to stick with my lip trill, which is the. <laughs> And use your hands to push your belly in, right? So, oh, I started to get it. Yeah, I, I felt it a little bit. You know, it's a little, but it's getting there. <laughs> and if your nose itches, you're getting there. So keep doing it. Push in your belly. Believe me, it took me six months. I won't take you six months. It'll take you maybe six minutes or six days. But. <sighs> And 
and keep your eyes level. So when we concentrate, we tend to drop our eyes and drop our neck, which then closes your throat. So so look at a level playing field for your eyes. <laughs> and you're going to have spit and itchy nose <laughs> and all that. So, <laughs> And if that's really hard, you can do it through a straw. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, we can hear. Yeah, with a cup of water and just, you know, make sure it's not too full. Uh, this tea is too full, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But then, then a bubble but sound. But that makes it even funner, too, because you're making <laughs> bubbles, you know? You can do that. Exactly. I didn't set up my bubble glass uh, today. Usually I have a glass for my workshop. You can see the bubbles going. So, oh, you know, awesome. start with the straw because my speech therapist friend had to help me out of laryngitis one winter. The air was dry, I was emotionally stressed. It was holiday time when holidays can be stressful. And I got laryngitis as a throat chakra healing challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I'm a singer, I need my voice back. I can't be stuck in laryngitis mode for how many weeks now? And I couldn't get my high notes. So I learned to use the straw like a kazoo so if you can't do the buzz, do the hmm 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 Yeah, like little kids love to play that little um siren noise that you know the woo 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 Yeah <laughs> the firefighters. Um Romper Room if you are old enough to remember that. <laughs> you had a little cardboard box. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And, and, you know, what I love about this is that you don't, you you keep on giving different options. Like if, if this doesn't work, there's something you try this or this or that. And it's, it's just about experimenting and exploring and that there is a way you just might have to do it a little bit differently than somebody else, but that there's a way to exercise of this and get you into those deeper tones and to harmonize your body and put your into alignment. I want to say that I did notice when I was doing that a little bit, even though I'm still maybe I'm the six days or six months out from doing it right. Um, but uh, I felt my spine actually adjust and it popped a little bit. And, and so it was like, boop, 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 boop. and so I wanted to say that I was like, Oh, look at that. Like my spine's cracking from this. I must've been out of alignment. That's probably why I can't do this. You know? Yeah. And the exhale. Well, that can't. I'm the... having difficulty doing this. Sorry. We're taking the <laughs> can't word out. I, I, I... Yes, you're learning. <laughs> right. Because the can't is that you've told yourself you're not going to be able yeah. to do it. Right. So you've already told yourself I can't. So if you can open your mind and create some space for learning, right, that there is a learning curve, that I'm having trouble. Where is that stuck? Where, okay, my stomach isn't connected. Okay, so I'm gonna give myself a little, uh, 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 you know, like a little push uh, uh, in the stomach. Yeah. Uh, huh, 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 huh. So, so I say, laugh like the green giant, you know, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> no product uh, placement here, but just uh, like laugh like, Ho, 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 You know, or like, like Santa Claus. I mean, we just had Christmas. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. <laughs> right, right. So try to get those low notes to get grounded into your pelvis. And then you go, ha, 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 ha. Right, so notice in the ha, I'm lifting the roof of my mouth. I purposely didn't warm up my high notes today, and I purposely sound like a regular troubled human being. Um, <laughs> so, ha, 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 ha. So I'm doing this little trick where I'm kind of popping my my air with my hand uh -huh. and that trick by tossing my hand like I'm lightly tossing, you know, a Kleenex forward, nothing heavy, is that I'm cueing my my upper palate, my my roof of my mouth to go even if I feel a little clenched in my jaw. So mm. visualization, your brain being this amazing conductor of your body, you can command things even when they feel physically stuck by your mental game, right? Your yeah. mental game is, I can lift up here. Oh, and I, whoo, whoo, I could sound like an owl. And then maybe I could sound like Julia Childs, where you have to pat the chicken on the butt before you put in a little bit of butter. So, you know. <laughs> Do some goofy cartoon voices or 
my Julia Childs is not that good, but I do it for fun, right? Yeah. So you don't have to be good. Letting go of being good, forget it. You're learning. Be, yeah. be crappy. It's okay. <laughs> and just do it. And that there's these extra, I like that there's these ways. And I, I was thinking about it from the energetic point of view too. You're breaking up any congestion in those upper level chakras too, by, you know, doing things like this or pushing on your belly and like the, the, the motion through your auric field is really also removing some congestion too. Yeah. I, um, I taught the Sunday class for music breath and I woke up with allergies because I, I'm just allergic to everything. And LA, Los Angeles air is just not that clean. <laughs> There's oh, and it's getting worse right? as the days go by. Exactly. I swear. I'm like, <laughs> June glooms now in January. Uh, okay, I think it's just fog, smog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are in your own environmental ways. I have my air filtered, this, that, and the other. I woke up with my nose not happy and I needed to blow my my nose a lot uh, during the workshop and allow yourself to blow your nose because that's your fluids your your body naturally trying to cleanse and let go by the end of the workshop I had a great day my nose was clear my sinuses were good I was like hey I should just teach breath workshops every day and my nose will be cleaned out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, look at the, the effect that it had on you, you know, like physically from that. It's amazing. Yeah. And I'm sure energetically, too, and, and emotionally, you were just, you know, in a beautiful space. Well, uh, my choir director had us convinced, uh, and there's apparently a study that studies cigarette smokers and singers. Because I was like, you know, I can be lazy and forget to practice my piano and life gets busy and I don't feel like I'm missing something in my life. But when I don't sing, I feel like I'm missing something. And there's actually this kind of um, release, this high when you exhale long. And apparently cigarette smokers can be more addicted to the long exhale of smoking than they are to the nicotine, the chemical. Interesting. And they study that singers and smokers will have the same parts of their brain light up. So for those of you who are trying to quit your cigarettes, <laughs> you take some long, long exhales. <laughs> long exhales. And you don't really have to sing. You could just be like. Okay, I almost got to the end of the song. <laughs> you did. You're doing great. <laughs> so the more you do it, the better you are at the longer exhales. That's awesome. And now I know that you have a couple classes coming up with us. Um, so, you know, I think that you kind of hinted at, at uh, some of these techniques and many more that will be offered in a workshop. And we have it, we have coming up, but I just, just to make this evergreen, I'm hoping that you do a few of them with us so that if, if you guys miss this one coming up in January, that maybe you can take uh, one that hopefully will be in February or whatnot as well, right? Yeah, I'm thinking once a month is good. <laughs> and uh, after talking to other uh, spiritual people, I was like, you know what? Long exhales is about letting go. Why not time it with the full moon? Oh, that'd be beautiful. Right? And the breathing, the health benefits, the stress relief, uh, the ability to release, to clear and align your, your whole energetic system by using the power of your own breath. I mean, and, and also the alignment with empowerment too, right? That's like the epitome of self-empowerment. You're using you as the tool to tune you. You are your own healer, right? That the rest of us who are facilitators, we're just kind of, you know, nudging you along, giving you a couple tools here and there, but your healing journey, you need a team, but ultimately you have to do the practice. So if that's just you, you know, exhaling, shh, you know, yeah, everyone can do SHs, Right. So if the is hard, encourage yourself with what you can do, right? Start with the, so, you know, one, two, three, four, get to fives, get to sixes, try to get to, you know, tens, elevens, twelves, like how long can you make that happen? And know that um, maybe it's not your physical limitation. Maybe it's your mind that maybe you just need to like pull an invisible piece of gum 
and just keep pulling yarn or something mm -hmm. to like take your mind off of feeling that your breath is hard, right? Like letting go of it's difficult. Hey, I'm a goofy three year old. I'm a goofy dog. I'm a goofy cat. I'm just goofing around and I'm just going to go shh. <laughs> Maybe I'm that cat who's just pulling out all the Kleenex out of your Kleenex box <laughs> or, yeah. or your toilet paper roll, right? So, you know, whatever it is that you could goof off and make it more playful, mm -hmm. your brain's going to learn faster. I love that. And where can people find you? Oh my gosh, I love this. <laughs> you're setting me up. Um, you're, I'm with your uh publicity on liberate yourself right on yeah that's for our class workshop because i know you do also private one-on-ones and other things so i i'm at jen uh j-e-n-c as in cat voice jen c voice my name is jen chang but nobody can spell my name consistently correctly so i just chopped that off and said jen c voice on instagram on twitter um and on my website is jensyvoice.com. And I've also created some play tiles. Here's my mug. Oh, and I cool. have them in different colors. And when I first painted the canvas, I did a splash like you would play in a sandbox or on the beach. So the middle is like a splash. And then it's just a reminder to be playful. I so I have this in art form of um, in mugs or t-shirts or greeting cards. You can find that on the, my Etsy store as well. So if you find that you can't make the live workshop times, but you want to download the recording, sign up for the next workshop around the full moon. I'll do it once a month or maybe twice a month if there's more people interested. And then um, follow me on the Instagram at Gen C Voice, you know, get some of these in interior decor items to help you remember to be playful when you learn whatever it is that you're learning um, and to remember to blink and breathe and <laughs> not stare and not hunch, you know, just try to feel that tallness, right? So the brain responds to playfulness, to imagery, to, to inspiration. If that's your cat or dog that's stretching, oh, it's time for me to stretch too. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. So um, I don't know how much more time we have. Yeah, I think that's uh, wrapping it up right now, but I'm, I'm loving it. Is there anything else that you want to share before um, we wrap up? Yes, that your body is a musical instrument. Your brain is the conductor. Your feet are like the drum timpani section. They're going to give you your beat. So when you're walking, is a really good time to check in with your breathing. Uh, your pelvis is like the cello section. They have this resonance, so you, those are the low notes. Your middle is kind of like the, the violas. And I say my shoulders are like the diva violin section. They think they have the melody all the time, but they are not the most important instrument. They are part of a team. <laughs> <laughs> and so you want the whole orchestra to be playing, right? So um, I just want you to walk well, you know, sit well, sleep well. And uh, however you meditate, you know, try to find your whole body teamed up together working with you. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Jen. Oh, so much fun, Christina. Uh, check us out at Music Breath and Gen C Voice and at Liberate. So I hope to see you again. Yeah, and I hope everybody joins in and they can't make it that they get the recording like uh, Jen has said. But um, until next time, please like, share, uh, tell people to um, watch this and, you know, comments help. Uh, if you just even even if you do a thumbs up or just a, even a simple letter in the comment section, it just helps the algorithm out a little bit. So take a minute to do that. And until next time, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. Okay, well, uh, my name is Rebecca. Hi, I'm Reverend Doreen. 
Hi, my name is Travis. My name is Kimberly. My name is Lily, and I'm an energy healer at Liberate Hollywood. I really believe that everything is transmutable and everything is possible. I believe that we are swimming in a sea of energy and um, that this energy is love, even though I know a lot of the time it doesn't always feel like that. And I do pranic healing, which is energy. I'm a Reiki master, more energy. So what am I? I am a channel for energy to come through me to help you. There really isn't anything that you would need to do to prepare for a session other than be comfortable. The whole goal of the session is to provide you with a warm, comforting, soul and heart-centered environment from which to allow healing to occur. No, no, just come as you are. Always just come as you are. Uh, that's my job as a healer, to meet you where you are, to figure out what you need. Um, and to give that to you or to guide you also. Um, I'm so honored to be a guide in helping you to connect. To help re-energize you, heal you, change your programming so that you're no longer in your way of getting to things that you desire in your life. My objective working with clients, I guess, would be to help them connect to their divine self uh, so that they can facilitate their spiritual journey and their soul's path. In all forms of energy healing, regardless of what the practitioner says, it is up to the client to change their life. As a practitioner, we're serving as a channel or as, a, as an instrument for God to do the work, but it is up to the client to, to make better choices. I'm most passionate, I think, about being able to create a loving, supportive, and heart and soul-centered environment for clients to heal. I get really excited when I ha ex have a new client who's never experienced energy work before and they tend to say that they were drawn or magnetized into the store and they don't exactly know why or what for and it's a it's an opportunity to introduce them to the divine and I think it's a really beautiful thing to have that moment of awareness and that they're in that space of surrender because they don't have any expectations and they really get to see what it feels like to be a spiritual being. Once you activate that place within yourself, uh, it's powerful and it feels so good. It's very healthy for the body. I think it realigns all of your energy. Um, it connects you to source, uh, both within you and outside of you. It's really cool. It's such an honor and a privilege to be in the space where a moment happens and people have this awareness about who they are or they're able to grieve over something they may not have been able to before or they are able to see themselves for who they truly are in a more empowered and soul-centered way. But I'm trying to give you the tools so that when you leave, you feel, you feel connected come with an open mind, come with um, humor in your heart, and, and we'll get you on the right path for you. You'll learn more about yourself, you'll let go of things that might be holding you back in your life, and you'll feel more empowered about your decisions. I hope to see you soon. So, expect change. Radical change. <laughs> I laugh, but it's true. <laughs> Thank you, and I wish you love, peace, and higher consciousness.